I am not gonna be buying a house in 2022. And as a full-time real estate agent who is currently renting, that may seem backwards or quite frankly, a bad investment decision given how the real estate market has been trending upwards in the past couple of years and how renting is essentially throwing your money away. But more on that later. In this video, I'm gonna give you my seven reasons why I'm not gonna be buying a house in 2022. So you can agree, disagree, argue all you want in the comment section below. All that I ask is that you hear me out on my arguments because this is a video about a realtor telling you why they're not gonna be buying a house. So let's get started. The first reason I'm not gonna be buying a house in 2022 is interest rates. Interest rates have seemingly been at an all time low for a very long time. In 2019, they were around 3.5%. In 2020, they dropped all the way down to 2.5%. Now they're working their way back up. And you may be thinking, okay, he's not gonna buy because he's gonna wait for the interest rates to go back down lower. Well, actually it's a little bit different than that. The real answer is that interest rates have never and will never factor into my buying decision. What I care about is my buying power and my monthly payment. Now, again, this may seem counterintuitive because those two things, buying power and monthly payment, go hand in hand with the interest rates. But the way that I think about it is if the interest rate increases or my potential monthly payment goes up or I can't afford the house that I'm looking at, I need to make more money or I need to buy a different type of property. You know, I work with buyers as a full-time real estate agent all the time that say they want to wait six months for interest rates to go back down. What if they don't go back down? What if they keep going back up? Are you going to never buy a house because they go up? I am a firm believer that you should never buy a property based on the interest rate alone. You should make your buying decision based on what's best for you, your family, and your personal real estate goals. And hey, if the interest rate happens to be low at that time, more power to you. The second reason I'm not purchasing a house in 2022 is inventory levels. Just like interest rates, we've seen historically low inventory levels in 2020 and the past couple of years. And we've even seen such sensational article headlines, such as there are more licensed realtors in the United States than homes for sale. And of course, it always boils down to supply and demand. During the pandemic, we saw record low inventory levels. And meanwhile, people were so cooped up in their houses that everyone went out and wanted to buy a bigger house, leading to a high level of demand. And we saw you know, escalated sales prices, higher sales prices throughout pretty much every market in the United States. And now we're starting to see inventory levels creep back up as people have purchased their house or they're no longer interested in buying a house right now. So the inventory levels, they don't necessarily scare me. I'm not waiting for inventory to come back. I'm not waiting it to go back down low again for some reason. I'm more of the mindset that I don't rely solely on one source for properties. So we have the MLS, that's where everyone looks, but there are other ways to acquire properties and to find the house that you're looking for, such as door knocking, cold calling, direct mail to neighborhoods or to types of properties that you're interested in, and then local Facebook groups. I'm in a lot of realtor Facebook groups, or if you're not a real estate agent, then local neighborhood Facebook groups where people talk and discuss. And the second someone starts asking for a moving company, they might be interested in selling. Now, the whole idea of interest rates going up, so you need to buy now, or inventory levels are at an all-time low, you need to get in because there's no more houses available. That scarcity tactic is brought to you, of course, by us, the real estate industry, real estate agents trying to sell you a house, mortgage lenders trying to sell you a loan, or websites trying to sell you on clicks with those clickbaity titles. All of that is external noise that I am ignoring because I know when the timing is right for me to purchase my own primary residence, there are many different avenues and many different ways to purchase a property that inventory levels or lack thereof will not affect me when it comes to buying a house. Let's talk about a big reason why a lot of people aren't buying a house and that is the market crash. Guys, the upcoming pending looming market crash that 
still hasn't happened yet. And I promised to myself I would never make a YouTube video that says market crash question mark with flames popping up everywhere and one of those scare tactic videos. And I still won't. This won't be a market crash video. But my mindset on the market crash is I am going to buy a house whether or not there is a market crash or not. And hear me out on this because I think the saying goes, in calm waters, every ship has a great captain. And the reason I bring up that quote is because, you know, when it's when it's 75 degrees and sunny, you know, everyone is, is happy and it's all rainbows and unicorns. And my next property that I wanna live in, that I wanna purchase as a primary residence I want to be there for 15 to 30 years. So if I buy this property, the market crashes and I lose half my equity, well, I don't plan on selling. So why should I care about a market crash? Now, again, that, that may come off the wrong way and you know my job might be affected, but I want to be in a position where it won't matter if there is a market crash. It won't matter if my job is affected because whether or not there's a market crash, I'm not gonna sell. In fact, if there is a market crash before I'm ready to purchase my primary residence, then maybe I even purchase before that. So I'm not gonna let any sort of market crash or timing the market affect when I'm ready to purchase a property. I'm not here to tell you whether there is or is not an impending market crash, whether one will happen, whether the bubble's gonna burst. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't think any other YouTuber does, but I wanna put myself in a position where it essentially won't matter whether or not there is or is not a market crash. Okay, so the fourth reason I'm not buying a house right now is the stock market. The stock market has seen incredible gains over the past two years, and that's where I'm putting a lot of my earned income. Now, you could make the argument that I believe in the stock market more than the real estate market because that's where I'm putting my money. But there is a big caveat there. I plan on using money that I make in the stock market for my next real estate purchase. So you could say that I believe in the stock market short term, like the next couple of years, one to two years, and then I believe in the real estate market long term. And while we're on the topic of investing in the stock market, let's talk about Bitcoin for about 15 seconds. Yes, I am putting my money into Bitcoin, only a little bit of money into Bitcoin. To me, a cryptocurrency in Bitcoin is more of a buy and hold that I never want to sell and I never want to let that portion of my portfolio affect any sort of other financial assets that I have going on. So I don't really count the Bitcoin money, if you will. I enjoy watching it go up. I, I don't really enjoy watching it tumble back down. But I do want to make one thing clear. I would much rather buy a property than I would invest in Bitcoin. The fifth reason that I'm not buying a house is something that happened to me recently. And this is on a personal note. Many of you probably don't know this, but me and my girlfriend had been dating for about three and a half years, living together, got a puppy together, and we recently decided to separate. And the puppy is now with her dad in Charlottesville. And so that has thrown you know a big wrench into my plans and she's a great person and you know she's doing big things and we had been looking to rent or buy a single family house in Arlington with a fenced in backyard which the average price for something like that is above a million dollars and now that it's just me no girlfriend no dog it makes literally zero sense to go out and buy a million dollar property. I don't need four bedrooms. I don't need two and a half, three and a half bathrooms or a fenced in yard right now. So those plans completely changed my real estate outlook, whether or not to purchase a house in the upcoming months. Had I gone out and purchased a house and then we split up, that would have made things even more difficult with cutting the house, who gets the house, cutting it down the middle. We weren't married, so I guess that's essentially a good thing, but mortgages can get a little hairy when you know there's a breakup involved. So I guess I'm glad I didn't buy a house when we were together. I'm just trying to get my words in order here. I, I think what I'm trying to say is we had a roadmap or I had a roadmap of the type of property that you know we wanted to purchase or that we, we were working towards and, and that has recently changed dramatically. And because of my 
relationship status, my real estate goals have also changed dramatically. The sixth reason that I'm not buying a house is that I'm renting, I am loving it, and wait for it, I don't believe that renting is throwing money away, and I'm gonna double down on that by saying, I believe I'm actually saving money by renting instead of purchasing, let me explain. So my current rent is $2,800 per month, plus 150 for utilities and parking, which brings us to 2950 per month. Let's make things easy, round up, that's $3,000 per month. That gets me a two bed, two bath condo in the Roslyn neighborhood of Arlington, Virginia. This location is perfect for me because it's within about a 15 minute drive of most of my appointments, and the second bedroom is a necessity because that's my studio and that is my home office. Now the argument could be made that I should buy a two bedroom, two bath in the same building. And ironically enough, the exact same floor plan just came on the market. So let's run the numbers to see what that would look like. This unit is listed for $674,900, basically $675,000. And if I put down 10%, that comes to about $67,000. And my monthly payment would be around $4,300 per month. So if I were to buy this property, I'd be paying about $1,300 per month more. And then I'd also have to put down about $70,000. That's not even including closing costs. So this makes no financial sense at all to purchase this unit because in the first year alone, I'd be spending more than $80,000 to buy this unit compared to renting it. And one of the biggest arguments I hear is that I'd be missing out on the appreciation, oh, the appreciation. Well, what happens if the market goes down? What happens if you buy a condo in a declining market? This is a building and an area where condo prices soared through the roof in the past couple years they're starting to decline. And at this price point, I've basically calculated out that I would have to live here for about eight years to see any sort of appreciation value when you factor in the transactional costs, including realtor commissions. And in eight years, I'm gonna be 39 years old. I'm gonna be knocking on the door uh, as a 40 year old. So I'm gonna be hopefully in a completely different place in my life where it doesn't make sense to stay here for the total of eight years. And you may say, okay, well, what if you rented it out, you know, as as a tenant or, you know, find a tenant sometime in, the, in that eight year period? Well, if the mortgage is 4,300 and then I'm paying about 3,000 for rent right now, I'd be losing about $1,300 per month. Now, the other argument I hear about why you should buy instead of rent is the mortgage deductions, the interest that you can write off on your taxes. Now, if I were to get this loan, the interest that I'd be paying would be about $1,300 per month. And if that down payment is about $70,000, that would take me about four years to even scratch the surface of recouping that amount. So not really a wise investment either. And the reality is I could go out and buy a place tomorrow. It would be a townhouse in a neighborhood about 30 minutes away where I could rent out the other rooms to recent college graduates and I could essentially house hack the property, live in it at a heavy discount, have the renters pay my mortgage and live on the cheap basically. And on paper, that may look like a great financial decision, but I don't wanna be 30 minutes away from my work. I don't wanna be 30 minutes away from my friends, from the restaurants I love going to. And I, I'm pretty sure I could get a lot of appreciation out of that brand new property that's 30 minutes away that was farmland 10 years ago. But the kicker is I'd be miserable. I would hate my life. And why would I sacrifice my happiness to renting out a couple rooms to a few UVA grads when I would be miserable? It doesn't make any sense for my primary residence. I don't want to do that. And for me and my business, it makes all the sense in the world to stay in Arlington, live in Arlington, and to rent my primary residence in Arlington. So with that being said, I do not plan on buying a house as a primary residence in 2022, but I do believe in the power of owning real estate, which is why I have a goal in 2022 to purchase my first property, which will be a short-term investment 
rental property. This would be a property that I could rent out on Airbnb or Verbo. It could be within driving distance of the DC metro area, but doesn't have to be. Ideally, it'd be somewhere where I could hang out on the weekends if it's not being rented out, but that's not a necessity. The bigger necessity is to start my rental portfolio, to get doors under my belt. Because I know when I look back on my life and when I look back on my career as a real estate agent, I am going to regret not buying and holding, buying and holding more investment properties. I'm a real estate agent. I sell houses for a living. There's nothing I'd rather do than own real estate, but I do wanna be smart about it and I wanna start by purchasing rental properties. And then when it makes sense for me and my family, it's, it's just me right now, I do plan on purchasing my primary residence. But for now, I am putting it out into the universe that I plan on purchasing a rental property in 2022. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the journey. Subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. And until next time, create a productive day. Take care.